The Mars 2 Pro is LU's newest monochrome LCD screen printer, promising to cut layer times by as much as 75%. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the machine and how it operates. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. Without further ado, let's get to it. Getting into the actual box now, the first thing that I noticed after pulling away the styrofoam packaging was the inclusion of some additional FEP sheets. Now with the original Mars Pro, there was actually no replacement FEP, and so it was nice to see that Uglu decided to include some spares with their new Pro unit. After setting aside the FEP, I was able to pull out the user manual for this printer. Now the first difference that I noticed between this and the original Mars Pro manual was that this simply stated user manual, while the original Mars Pro manual said Mars Pro. This is because this manual is for both the Mars 2 and the Mars 2 Pro. Elgu also decided to include their standard toolkit. This includes a number of items that you might find useful if you're just getting into resin printing. We're going to go over the contents of this box later. For now, here's a comparison next to the original Mars Pro toolkit. Alright, that's the entire contents of the box. We're going to get this unwrapped and placed upon our workstation. Alright, now that we have the printer up on our workstation, we're going to begin unwrapping it. The first thing that I noticed was just how tightly everything was packaged together. Everything felt very snug. It made me feel very confident that there wasn't any damage to the machine and that it wasn't knocked around too much while it was getting to me. The build plate for the Mars 2 Pro actually came sandwiched between these two big chunks of styrofoam. And when I pulled it out I examined it closely and didn't find any nicks, dings, scratches, dents, or any kind of damage to the build plate itself. After removing both the top block and the build plate, the bottom block came away relatively easily and I was able to examine the rest of the Mars 2 Pro surface. After pulling away the screen protector, we were ready to get the printer set up and ready for our first print. Going back to our toolkit from earlier, I opened the box and was pleased to find the power cord sitting directly on the top. It's a standard 12 volt power cord, interchangeable with most electronic devices that you would find around your home. Now it did take me a little bit longer than I care to admit to actually get the printer plugged in. This is my first resin printer and with my FDM printers the power cord normally goes directly into the printer itself. So after a couple of failed attempts I decided to go back to the manual where I found out that I need an adapter. Going back to the toolkit I found the adapter buried all the way at the bottom of the box. Now it's a little bit easier to see how I made the mistake of assuming there wasn't an adapter for the printer at all. After plugging the power cord to the adapter, and the adapter into the printer, we were ready to flip the switch and get it turned on. Now the first time I turned it on, I actually wasn't aware that it takes a couple moments for the printer to boot up, and I was worried it might be broken, so you can imagine my relief when the screen finally came to life. Next step is to begin leveling the build plate, so after raising the z-axis to allow for a little bit more clearance, and tearing the protective film off of the build plate. Oh yeah, that's nice. I placed the build plate back on the z-axis and tightened the restraining bolt. Now you really cannot over tighten any of the screws on this machine unless you're purposely trying to strip them, and I do mean that you want to make sure they're as tight as you possibly can get them. So after removing the resin vat, you want to make sure that you take note of the protective film covering the bottom of it. If you do not pull this protective film off, your prints will not print successfully as the light will not be able to properly penetrate the FEP. You're going to want to remove the protective sheet also covering your LCD screen for similar reasons. Included with the toolkit was a small wrench. You're going to go ahead and take that wrench and use it to loosen the bolts towards the bottom of the build plate. You want to make sure that you loosen the build plate enough, because when you go to home, if you do not, you run the risk of cracking your screen. Again, you want to make sure that the build plate is able to move freely, because if it is not, you do run the risk of cracking your LCD screen when you go to return your build plate to home. To begin leveling your Mars 2 Pro, you're going to place a standard piece of copy paper on the print bed, and then begin lowering the build plate using the auto home button located in the options menu. Once the build plate has returned to its preset home position, you should no longer be able to move the piece of paper. At this point, you're going to go ahead and tighten the screws towards the bottom of the build plate, making sure to tighten the forward facing screw first. After tightening the screws, you're going to go ahead and adjust the build plate by one tenth of a millimeter at a time until you're able to remove the piece of paper while still feeling some friction between it and the build plate. One thing to make sure of is that your build plate is running parallel to the arms that secure the resin vat to your printer itself. After giving the bolts on the build plate a final tighten, you're going to want to make sure that the tension between the build plate and the piece of paper is not changed significantly while tightening the bolts by giving it a final tug, and it looks good. The final step is to go back and zero your machine 
This is essentially setting the start point for your print and will allow your printer to compensate for the space between the build plate and the FEP. After raising the build plate to allow for sufficient excess, remember to peel the protective film off the bottom of your resin vat before installing it securely in your machine. You're going to want to tighten the bolt securely enough that the resin vat will not jostle while printing, as this can lead to layer lines. The final step is to do what's called an exposure test. This displays a test image on the LCD screen to ensure that there are no dead areas and that you get the full image that you want to print. Next we're going to pour our resin in, but first we're going to remove this USB that Elgo included that includes that Rook test model that we're going to print later. This resin is pretty nasty stuff so we're going to want to take safety into account here. Luckily they provide several pairs of gloves for you to get started with. We're going to be using the standard gray resin here. This is a very basic resin, I think it's what most people get started with. I didn't want to use anything fancy for the test model for my first print that we might end up wasting anyway. We're going to give the bottle a shake here, and then pour it in. Now you want to be extremely careful while you're pouring this resin into your printer. If you do get it on the screen and it does cure somehow, it is impossible to get off and you will have to replace the entire screen. So just be very careful as you don't want to get any spills anywhere that you don't notice until later. And this is it, the last thing to do is lower this UV protective hood over the printer and get to work. Now for our first test print we're just going to be doing a standard Elugu test rook that came preloaded on the flash drive that we pulled out of the funnel earlier and you can see a preview of it here loaded on the screen. Now one thing I find particularly interesting about this printer is that it shows the preview of each layer as it's being exposed to the resin in the vat above on the screen here so you can really track your print as it's being developed in real time. While that's printing, we're going to go over a little bit more about the printer in depth. Starting with the screen, as it's arguably the biggest upgrade, the Mars 2 Pro comes equipped with a monochrome LCD screen. The new LCD screen manages to reduce curing times from 6 to 8 seconds, down to 2, and possibly as little as 1 second if you're able to fine tune your machine well enough. Speed isn't the only advantage though, as LCD screens have up to 4 times the lifespan of traditional resin printing screens. The other major improvement is a slightly larger build plate. The Mars 2 Pro features a build plate of 129 by 80 by 160 millimeters, making it slightly larger than the original Mars Pro. This also makes it larger than comparable models such as the Frozen Sonic Mini and the Anycubic Photon S. Now you may have noticed that the footage is cut a little abruptly here. What happened during my initial test print of the Rooks was that I had forgotten to tighten the bolts on the build plate completely, and that led to the build plate becoming tilted while it was being pulled away from the FEP. My original test rooks ended up becoming sort of a sideways pancake kind of mess, and unfortunately they didn't turn out well. So I ended up spending a couple hours recalibrating the machine and making sure everything was level before trying to print again. I left the machine going overnight, and unfortunately at some point my camera cut out so we don't have the footage of the rooks being pulled out of the test vat. However, when I went to go check on the rooks the next morning, I had found them fused to the build plate pretty significantly and after several failed attempts of removing them with the included scraper, it was getting pretty obvious to me that the rooks didn't feel like going anywhere. Unfortunately for them, we needed them off the build plate for this video, and so I had to resort to what's better known as the hammer method. For those of you that don't know, the hammer method is something that you can sometimes get away with if you have a particularly dense 3D print stuck to your build plate. Sometimes if you strike the print with enough sun force, it will actually sever from the build plate, which is what happened here. Now if you do use the hammer method, I definitely recommend re-leveling your printer afterwards as it most certainly will not retain its original level. After severing the prints from the build plate, I put them in a bath of 99% isopropyl alcohol and put it in my Anycubic wash and cure machine in a 4 minute cycle. Subscribe to the channel Nexus Technologies for my review of the Anycubic cure and wash machine coming out soon. After taking the test rooks out of the wash, replacing the turntable, and then placing those rooks on the turntable, we're able to turn on the machine and get them curing. Now there's a couple more things that I want to mention about this printer. First off being the sound. I don't know if you guys have been able to tell, but there's been a slight fan noise going this entire time. It's actually been the printer going on less than a foot away from my microphone while I've been working. So when I say it's whisper quiet, it really is. The other thing is the smell. This printer features an active carbon filter, and it really does a good job of taking the air from inside the printer, cycling it, and removing any resin odor that you might detect. Again, this printer sits on my desk about a foot away from my workspace, and I really haven't been able to detect any resin odor, except for when I take the lid off to add more resin, or take a print off the build plate. Alright guys, and here we have our finished test rooks. You can see the first two I was talking about earlier that started printing a little bit sideways. I was really tempted to let these things go, because they printed almost perfectly sideways, and I really wanted to see how they turned out. 
Um, I really wanted to get a perfect test prick done for the end of this video. It's kind of fascinating to see that even the helix on the inside printed sideways. Maybe another day we'll try printing with a tilted build plate. Our more well done test rooks turned out pretty perfectly. It's really easy to see the logo embellished on the side, and even on the top it's really easy to make out the words, Resin Printer Torture Piece. Very funny, Elegu. Very funny. Personally, I'm really excited to see just how far I can push this printer. This is my first resin printer, and I can't say I'm anything less than blown away by the results. If you're considering getting a Mars 2 Pro for yourself, I definitely recommend it for its speed, ease of use, and affordability. Definitely a great beginner level printer, or one to add to your already existing collection. Alright guys, and that's the end of my first video. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end. If you have any feedback, leave it down in the comments below. I really appreciate it. If this video helped you pick a resin printer for yourself, mention it down in the comments. I'd love to give you a shout out during my next video. We're just starting to get this channel growing, so if you hit that subscribe button, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that bell button so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. We got some reviews coming up on another resin printer soon, some resin printer washing gear machines, a lot of fun stuff. I'll see you guys next time.